Hi everyone, I'm Stan from Ellie.ai, product manager here, and today we're gonna deep dive into AI functionality of Ellie, the things we already have, the philosophy behind us bringing AI to a data modeling tool, and also where it's going in the future. Uh, before I show you some of the cool demos, I want to kind of start with a couple of slides and explain the whole philosophy behind this. So our kind of overall vision is to create an AI assisted enterprise data modeling experience. This is our vision. We're not fully there yet, uh, but we are, uh, trying to add things that enable these workloads rapidly into the tool. And, uh, the overall idea of why, uh, AI is so powerful in data modeling is that when we as humans model, we only look at one thing at a time. We look at one canvas, one model, one entity, and our context is kind of limited. We cannot keep everything that exists in an enterprise data modeling environment at once. AI actually can. Uh, it can keep all that context. It can keep into the consideration all the other entities you have, the relationships across your uh, models, and all of that can be kind of as context for the AI. So it can bring enterprise-wide context to your modeling. Another thing it is great because it uses all that context. It is also pretty good at suggesting documentation like metadata and it can really speed up the work. Often kind of starting is hard. Uh, AI can help you facilitate with those workflows. And our overall idea uh, with AI, you can speed up a lot of that modeling uh, work uh, that you're currently doing uh, just because it can assist you with a lot of these tasks. And there's a great quote by Alex Karp, who's the CEO of Palantir. In order to actually make AI work, uh, you need an ontology and no one has an ontology. And to kind of back it up, I also kind of brought a couple of uh, recent acquisitions we've heard recently, uh, which is Salesforce buying Informatica and ServiceNow acquiring DataWorld, which is a data catalog. And essentially what we're seeing is a lot of uh, kind of tech native companies, what they are realizing is that for their AI agents to be powerful, they need to provide a lot of context around the company. So if Salesforce is building, let's say, a sales agent, uh, that AI agent needs to also understand how the company works, uh, look at different kind of things or data within the company, kind of understand how to sell better or what to do. And that's kind of like the power of AI. Uh, if you provide a lot of context to it, uh, it can do magic, but without it, uh, it's, it's not going to be as great, right? And kind of another important thing that we keep in our heads when we're thinking of AI specifically for data wor work is that LLMs are great generalists. And what that means is that when AI talks to a salesperson, a medical expert, an engineer, it doesn't really matter because they are trained on all the data in the world, right? They're really good at understanding any domain. Uh, and as such, they become really good kind of translators from business knowledge into data context. We as data people, because our expertise is specifically in data domain, we might not understand a lot of nuances that fortunately AI to a degree can capture and understand quite well. And because of these things uh, and overall the way Ellie is right now, we, we kind of see that Ellie enables AI powered by context. And what I mean is that in Ellie, when you model, when you structure your work across domains and folders or lines of business, when you define terms, all of this is important context that can be used by AI. Additionally, in Ellie, you can connect other tools to it. So if you have a tool like Colibra for data governance, you can connect all the information from Colibra and bring it into Ellie as additional context. Uh, you can also connect to different source systems now. So you can also give to AI as context the information of this is the type of source systems we have, the type of data we have in these systems. And this is very powerful for AI because then you have your design context, your governance context, and your raw data context or in all in one. Uh, simple to use and easy interface, but also for AI, it's really powerful to kind of understand easily all these things when you're modeling. And we already have a couple of workflows, AI powered workflows within Ellie, uh, such as text to model and chat to model. And lately we've been working on our source navigator that I cannot wait to tell you more. Uh, and I'll show you a bit about that in a couple of minutes, but let's just quickly recap the functionality we already have in Ellie that is powered by AI. So one of the first things we did uh, as part of our kind of AI initiatives is we created our text to model workflow, which essentially allows you to paste business requirements, whether it's a document or just long text, and our AI will analyze those business requirements and find uh, entity candidates. From those entity candidates, you can select which entities you actually want to use in a specific model, 
press next, and then our AI, uh, based on again, your original requirements, the entities you selected will also figure out the proposed uh, relationships. And then another workflow we build as part of that initial AI initiative is also our chat with model AI. So essentially it's a chatbot within our conceptual model in Canvas that you can chat with, explain what you wanna do around a model, and uh, it will be able to kind of facilitate those tasks. So if you've never modeled before, you can use it to ask, what is this model about? It will give you a detailed explanation. But we also taught our AI kind of really good rules on like what is an entity, what shouldn't be an entity, and kind of overall like uh, different things around conceptual modeling. Uh, so it will also reason a bit and kind of challenge you. And it can also use our tool itself, right? So just like a normal modeler, it knows how to add entities, add relationships. So you can kind of use it to discuss your data model, but you can also use it to kind of facilitate the modeling itself because it can create the model on the fly as you chat with it. And now uh, let's look at our AI source navigator, something that we've been cooking for quite some time already, and I'm really excited to share. And essentially the idea here is that with our partnership with CData, we can connect to now over 160 different data sources. These can be sources like Oracle, SAP HANA, and all sorts of systems, also like modern warehouses like Snowflake and Databricks. And the idea here is that we don't just wanna to connect to your sources to bring information, okay, there's a bunch of tables in the systems. Uh, we also wanna enrich them with synthetic metadata. And the way this works is uh, when you bring your source tables to Ellie, we won't just bring them as empty tables data, but we'll also generate synthetic metadata. Uh, and some examples of why it's useful is quite often, you just might not have any documentation. You don't know how you would use a certain attribute or a certain table. There's no such metadata within your sources. Our AI agent can generate that for you. Uh, you can use it either by just providing the metadata, but in most cases, we recommend that you also provide sample data because then AI can really generate good metadata for you. Uh, also, sometimes, uh, uh, your table names can be something like TCB100D. And of course, if you haven't accessed this uh, source before, you'll be like, what do I even do with it? Well, our AI agent can generate uh, semantic table names also on your behalf. And the reason we're doing all of that is to enable discovery. So once you generate the metadata, it is much easier to discover what tables you could use for a certain project. So we've built a AI agent uh, that you can have a conversation with, provide a certain task you're working on or a model or an entity, and it will find the relevant raw tables that you could use for your project, whether it is a data project you're working on or you're migrating to a new schema, your existing system, or if you just wanna add lineage from your source uh, tables, to your entities. So maybe without further ado, uh, we'll jump into a demo and I'll show you how this works in practice. So I'm gonna go to my Ellie environment and what you'll notice here uh, is I have now my sources as a new uh, item on my left sidebar. And currently I have nothing because I wanna show you how this all works in practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press load sources and I'm gonna select one of my existing connections. So we're, I already have a bunch and I'm gonna connect to my Postgres SQL database. And the cool part about this is that this is actually the database uh, structure that powers Ellie itself, right? So based on this, uh, based on these schemas, we have, you know, the, the tool itself running based on these schemas. All right, and I'm gonna select two of our main schemas, public and v2, and I'm also gonna generate the AI metadata for these tables. And now I'm gonna import the data sources. So first thing, the system will connect to my uh, SQL database. Uh, it will fetch the metadata of all the tables uh, that exist in these schemas. And then uh, since I allowed it, it will also fetch sample data for every single table, just kind of as a reference so it can really understand what every table is about. So this process is gonna take a couple of minutes uh, and let's just wait. And when it's done, I'll show you what it's all about. And now our metadata has been generated. So let's go and open one of the tables. I'm going to open, let's say, the entities table, just so I can show you how it looks. Let's just give me a sec, I'll find it. So let's open this table. I'm going to edit the source. And what you'll notice here is now we've populated a lot of metadata into this table. 
And uh, for every single item that is AI generated, we always add this little blue icon so you can see that this was generated by an AI model. It's very important because we wanna always distinguish what is AI generated and what is done by a real person because that has always much more value. And uh, what we'll see here is that the semantic table name has been created. We also generated a table description which kinda explains how you could use this table. We added a couple of tags, which you can use later for search, but also for AI, for AI, it is quite useful. And then what you'll notice as well is that we have added uh, column row descriptions. So you can see how you could use uh, data from different attributes. And we've also added logical groups, which you can use to kind of distinguish different parts of the table and how you could use it and potentially also normalize it further. So we can do this for every single table that you bring for our C data connectors, and we can truly, you know, generate metadata for your tables. So what do you do with it next? Well, uh, we also added our new source navigator. It kind of works like a chatbot where you can just have any conversation you want, uh, but uh, it can also search through the context that is available in Ellie. Uh, specifically, you can have a conversation about your source tables. So uh, a test we always run in Ellie is, let's say I want to know how many entities do we have per each organization. Since I have loaded the Ellie's internal database structure kind of as context for our source tables, what the AI will do is it will look at my request, kind of what I want to analyze, and will find the most relevant tables for this specific analysis. Of course, this is a small case, but you can expand it to much more complex things. And what we see here is that our AI agent has found two uh, tables. It has found the collections table from V2 and also the entity records table from the V2 schema. Uh, now that I open it, I'm pretty sure this is exactly the table I want. And you can always continue the conversation with the chat further so you can add additional requests. And for the sake of it, what I'll do is I'll ask it to generate the SQL for this analysis. So let's go. Uh, great. Let's use the V2 entities table, uh, generate the SQL code for my analysis, uh, order in descending order. And because the AI knows the tables that it found the most relevant and it can see my next request, I, I also get a working SQL for my analysis. This is kind of like a side thing we realize that you can do with this. Uh, but there's a lot of more other things that you can do with our source navigator. You can paste, for example, a conceptual or logical or physical model as code uh, into this uh, chatbot, and it will find the relevant source tables that you could use. If you have an entity like customer, and you added a well-detailed metadata like description and other information about it, uh, you can use this chatbot to basically find source tables that you should link to your customer entity. And there's a lot of new use cases we're still exploring and I'll be sharing them over the time as we find new cool ways to use the source navigator. If you're interested in this tool, uh, you can already uh, request it from our team and we're currently onboarding different uh, customers and prospects to test it out uh, as we are collecting feedback. So where are we going further with this? So the AI future for Ellie is to kind of expand the context of the whole Ellie environment to the AI. So currently our AI agent is able to understand and find all the relevant source tables. And what our team is currently working on is adding more metadata understanding and structure understanding to the AI. Specifically, we're gonna provide information about different folders, so domains and subdomains and your structure as context to AI, and also the models and entities themselves. Based on all of this context, AI becomes much more powerful and as such, it can do pretty cool things. Just like I shown you, it can generate SQL, but also it can generate models, uh, generate metadata and suggest like different things like, hey, you shouldn't create a new entity, you should reuse another one. And we're still discovering new and new use cases around this, uh, but we believe it's gonna be really powerful for our customers. So that's kind of where we are right now. And I'm excited for all of you to try the source navigator. Uh, you can, we can create a test environment for you if you want to try it out. If you're our trial user, we can enable it in your environment. Thank you for your time. I'm Stan. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure to shoot a comment or send us an email. Bye.